Welcome back to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Ender's Island. Today is Monday of the third week of Easter, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Our Lexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, verses 22 through 29. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our scripture passage. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Following the feeding of the 5,000 in the walking on water, Today, we begin the long discourse of Jesus as the bread of life. What we read today is really a simple introduction. The proper discourse will begin tomorrow. And the last part of the discourse is about the mixed reaction of Jesus' disciples and also Peter's profession. The day following the feeding, the people go in search of Jesus. First, they realize he did not cross the lake with his disciples, but when they go to the site of the feeding, they find he is not there either. Eventually, they find Jesus and his disciples in the vicinity of Capernaum. And so they ask him, when did you come here? Jesus answered by telling the crowds that they're coming in search of him, not because of the signs, that he is doing, but because of the bread that they had been given to eat, they have missed the point of what Jesus was doing. They have seen the things that Jesus has been doing, but have missed the sign, the deeper meaning behind them. The food they are looking for is not the food that counts. The real food, Jesus' body and blood, brings a life that never ends and that is the food that Jesus is offering. The source of this bread, of course, is the Son of God on whom the Father has set his seal. This seal 
was given Jesus at his baptism. It is the Spirit of the Father who is the power of God working in and through Jesus. In answer to the question, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? They're told, this is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. For works in the Jewish sense were an external fulfillment of the law's requirements, mostly found in rituals. Here, Jesus substitute faith in himself, the Son of God, in order to accomplish the works of God. And he asks us not to just believe, but to believe in, to embrace. It is not just a question of accepting certain statements about Jesus and who he really is. Believing in involves an embracing of all that is Jesus. It is a total and unconditional commitment of the whole self to Jesus, to the gospel, and the vision of life that he proposes, and then making it part of one's own self. When you receive communion, do you embrace the whole Jesus? His teachings, which we hear earlier in the liturgy of the word, his gospel message, his way of life, which he showed to us to follow. Do we deny ourselves? Do we take up our cross? And do we follow in Jesus' footsteps? That's something for each and every one of us to ponder as this Easter season continues. As usual, after our closing prayer, reread this scripture passage again. Contemplate its message and concentrate on a thought that the Holy Spirit places in your heart. This can be either through a verse or even just a small word from this scripture passage. Then ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you. And more importantly, how you may spiritually grow in imitation of Jesus, fulfilling the will of our Heavenly Father. Let us complete our divine reading with a closing prayer. And let us pray. Governed by your Holy Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those who contemplate and embrace your divine word, that in professing you, not just in words, but also in works and in spirit and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in always. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, please click the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on that bell icon so that you don't miss the new meditations that come to you each and every day. And please help our channel by sharing these links with others. Pass them along to your friends and relatives as well. God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's sacred word. Pax et bonum omnibus. Peace and blessings to all.